Hey everyone, Greg here, and fresh off the presses out of nowhere, Apple has now announced new MacBook Pro models, a new 13-inch and new 15-inch version for 2018. A lot of people thought this refresh would happen at WWDC, but apparently it took Apple a little bit longer to refresh their notebook line. Now this is just an upgrade to the Pro models, and more specifically, just an upgrade to the Pro models with the Touch Bar, the 13 and 15-inch version. So if you're a fan of the MacBook Pro model with just the escape keys, not the Touch Bar, you're kind of out of luck here. Apple didn't refresh those, but I did want to go over the 13 inch and 15 inch and some of the improvements you're going to get. And also I want to help you guys decide which MacBook Pro to buy if you're in the market for one. So the MacBook Pro will be keeping the same design as the 2016 and 2017 inch version. It's still going to have four Thunderbolt USB-C ports. It's still going to have the touch bar. It's still going to have that nice slim design. It's still going to have the same bezels around the screen. All that stays the same. However, what's changing is more on the inside and some of the screen technology with the MacBook Pro. So both the 13 inch and 15 inch version of the MacBook Pro are gonna have what Apple calls the T2 chip. Now the first version of the MacBook Pro actually shipped with the T1 chip. And that T1 chip was basically an Apple Watch processor running the touch bar in the MacBook Pro and also running the Touch ID fingerprint sensor for a secure login. So Apple has now upgraded that T1 chip with what they're calling the T2 chip, which is actually found in the iMac Pro. And the T2 chip actually is basically a A10 processor baked right into the MacBook Pro. Now the T2 chip inside this MacBook Pro isn't being used for any sort of processing power or anything like that, but it is being used for some interesting functions. The T2 chip's gonna be using the system management controller, image signal processor, audio controllers, SSD controllers, and secure booting. This will make logins more secure, it'll prevent like the webcam from being hacked and stuff like that, and it'll also enable the Hey Siri command. Now, both the 13 and 15 inch version of the MacBook Pro are shipping with a revised version of the butterfly key mechanisms. Apple's calling this the third generation butterfly keyboard and what it's improving actually is the typing sound on the MacBook Pro. So a lot of complaints with the 2016 and 2017 inch versions of the MacBook Pro are actually how loud the keys are when you're typing. So with this third generation MacBook Pro keyboard, they're actually claiming it's a lot quieter when you're typing, but a lot of people are kind of wondering, is the keyboard more reliable? There's been some issues with the 2016 and 2017 keyboards, breaking, having sticky keys, repeating keys, things like that. People are wondering if this redesigned keyboard are gonna be a bit more reliable. Apple kind of said nonchalantly that all they did was fix the quietness, that the other keyboards didn't have any sort of issues with them. I'm kind of calling BS on that. I think this is gonna probably be a little bit more reliable than the 2016 and 2017 inch versions. I just think that Apple really wouldn't admit that their previous versions had a significant flaw considering they were just selling those a day ago. I also think it's possible that Apple did a revision on the keyboards when the 2016 and 2017 inch repair program launched. So maybe they're already putting those new keyboards into anyone who's bringing in a 2016 or 2017 inch version to be repaired. So they're not gonna really admit that the keyboard is fixed with this butterfly third generation, but I really think there's a good chance that they actually looked, and if there was a problem with those butterfly keys, they kind of went in and fixed them, as long as made them quieter. They're addressing the complaints that people have with the keyboard, and that's a good thing. Time will tell if the keyboards are fixed, but I really think there's a good chance they are fixed. And finally, they both actually now have True Tone display. So the True Tone screen just basically changes the lighting of the screen based on the lighting environment you're in. So if you're in a room that's warmly lit, your MacBook will kind of get like a little warm yellow hue on it that kind of makes like the white web page resemble paper. It's a cool addition. I've been asking for True Tone for a while and I'm finally glad to see it here on the Mac. Now the biggest change to these computers is actually the processor bump inside of them. They're both gonna be shipping with Intel eighth generation chips. The 13 inch version is actually going to be getting the Intel quad core processors in them for the first time. This is the first time a 13 inch MacBook Pro will be shipping with quad core processors standard across the whole line. And Apple is claiming that these new quad core processors are twice as fast as the 2017 inch version. That is a huge upgrade for people looking to buy a MacBook Pro. Now the 13 inch is gonna start at 1799 for 256 gigabytes of storage and eight gigabytes of RAM with that quad core processor. And you can upgrade that all the way to a 2.7 gigahertz quad core i7 with 16 gigabytes of RAM and two terabytes of SSD storage for $3,699. Now that's really all the major updates are to the 13 inch model. It's still gonna be really portable, really light, weigh three pounds. Again, it's the same design as the 2017 inch version, just with a lot of internal improvements and improvements to the keyboard. Now, if you want a discrete graphics card, which I really wish the 13 inch did have, 
you're gonna have to move your way up to a 15 inch version of the MacBook Pro. Now, the 15 inch version of the MacBook Pro starts at $2,399. It's actually gonna have a hexa-core processor in it, so that means six cores inside this notebook. That is the first time a MacBook Pro is going to have six cores inside of it. So that is really, really a big processor speed bump. And for the first time in a MacBook Pro, you're actually gonna be able to upgrade the RAM all the way to 32 gigabytes on the 15 inch model. The 13 inch model is still limited to 16 gigabytes. Now remember those discrete graphics we were talking about, the 15 inch is actually gonna ship with both of those as standard. It's gonna come with a four gigabyte graphics card. Now there's two versions of this. There's the AMD Radeon Pro 455X and the AMD Radeon Pro 460X. There wasn't too much information on these cards, but it looks like it's a minor bump from last year's Radeon Pro 455 and Radeon Pro 460. Both of these cards do have four gigabytes of DDDR5 RAM inside of them, so they should be pretty similar, but I'm sure the 460X has a little bit of an advantage. We'll see when those come out, how those kind of compare. Recently, Apple didn't add 32 gigabytes of RAM because they said it would impact battery life. Now it seems for this 15 inch model, they actually increased the battery by 10 watt hours so they could add more RAM. So it doesn't decrease your battery life at all. So this more power hungry RAM is actually gonna be in there, but they actually added a bigger battery. So it's not gonna eat away at your battery. You'll have the same 10 hour battery life or supposedly 10 hour battery life that the 15 inch version has currently but you can get that 32 gigabytes of RAM if you need it. So again, the 15 inch gets that hexa-core processor, six core processor. It's gonna start at $2,399 for a 2.2 gigahertz six core processor with turbo boost up to 4.1 gigahertz. And it's gonna end all the way at $6,699 for a 2.9 gigahertz six core processor with turbo boost to 4.8 gigahertz with 32 gigabytes of RAM and a four terabyte solid state drive. Yikes, that's pretty expensive, but most of that cost is going to the solid state drive. It's not really necessary to have a four terabyte SSD, but if you do need it, Apple does have the option to put that in there. Uh, the normal price for this machine is gonna be more around $3,000 if you're not loading it with a giant solid state drive. So I know a lot of you are watching this video probably thinking to yourself, what should I buy? Should I go for the 13 inch version, more portability? Should I go for the 15 inch version because it has a discrete graphics card and has a six core processor? It's really gonna depend a lot on your budget and the features you need. So for me personally, if you're not doing anything video intensive, if you're not doing any gaming, if you're running Final Cut maybe, maybe you are a video editor and you're running Final Cut, you might be able to squeak by with a 13 inch version, especially if portability is very important to you. Um, if you're doing less graphical intensive tasks, maybe you're like a writer, uh, maybe you're a college student, I really think the 13 inch version is gonna hit that sweet spot for you. It really is a really big improvement, especially going up from a dual core processor to a quad core processor. Like Apple said, it's gonna be twice as fast. That is a huge improvement. And you have some really, really nice specs in there. And at $17.99, it's a little bit expensive, I know, because of the touch bar. But it's not too bad for what you're getting. So if you want to do any gaming, and I know gaming on a Mac is kind of a joke statement, but if you want to do any gaming, you want to do a hardcore video editing, uh, you're doing a lot of 3D modeling, stuff like that, very intensive programs that will actually use a discrete graphics card. If you're doing something that really requires fast compile times, fast export times, something that's really gonna take advantage of a six core processor. Also with the 15 inch version, you do get that option for 32 gigabytes of RAM. So if you're running a lot of programs at once, if you are video editing, anything like that that takes advantage of a lot of RAM, it's really gonna be beneficial to you. And you really need to be doing some really serious and intensive stuff for 32 gigabytes of RAM. Say you're running a lot of virtual machines and stuff like that. 32 gigabytes of RAM would definitely be a nice bonus. So just to sum that up quickly, if you need a lighter machine, you wanna carry it around a lot with you, you're not doing all those graphically intensive programs, you don't need a discrete graphics card, you don't need the 32 gigabytes of RAM, I'd go with the 13 inch version and save some money. Uh, especially if you're just like a college student or something like that. I really think the 13 inch MacBook Pro will be plenty. If you know you're a power user and you're gonna need that 32 gigabytes of RAM, you need a discrete graphics card. The 15 inch is kind of the only way to go at that point. It is a bit higher cost at $2,399, but you are getting some nice upgrades in there. The addition of 32 gigabytes of RAM, a discrete graphics card, and a six core processor is just really, really enticing, especially for those pro users who really know how to make use of all those extra features. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. I really hope this overview helped you get a clearer picture of the differences between the 13 inch and 15 inch version of the MacBook Pro. And I hope my buying advice at the end of the video gave you some 
inclination of where you want to go. If you like the video, you can show your appreciation by leaving a like on the video. If you want to see more from my channel, especially a review of that MacBook Pro coming up next week, make sure you're subscribed. I'm also going to be covering that new Blackmagic eGPU they released, so if you're in the market for a MacBook Pro, you might also be interested in the Blackmagic eGPU, so make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to see some of that. As always, guys, let me know in the comments below what you think of the new MacBook Pros, if you're going to be picking one up, what version you're going to be picking it up, and let me know if this video was helpful, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.